Simon worked for a wildlife protection center and had a reputation of being a sort of animal whisperer, but his charms failed him miserably while he was trying to save a baby swan, and its father reacted in a very unexpected way. Simon was a wildlife aid worker who had committed his life to animals and their welfare. In fact, he had been passionate about his line of work from a very young age, so much so that he had volunteered at a variety of animal sanctuaries before he left school. He had in his career worked with a wide variety of animals, dealing with whatever they threw his way, whether it was a rogue pet snake, a grumpy badger, or even a mean fox. He had been there and dealt with it. He had just the right personality to navigate these situations. In fact, he was known quite comically for being a clown when working with rescue situations. He would transform himself into the characteristics of the animal he was trying to help. It was his way of making the animal in question quite comfortable. In some ways, he was in fact an animal whisperer because the creatures would very often listen intently to him. It was as if they could understand that he was there to help them in any way he could. This had helped him out of some sticky situations many times before and also came in hand the day he was called to help a squirrel in need. The poor thing had fallen and broken a leg in someone's yard. However, when Simon got there, he found more than one squirrel in the garden. Its family had come out to try and protect its kin while it was stuck with its damaged leg. Simon knew he needed to help the squirrel, but in order to do this, he had to get around the mass of relatives that had congregated. He used his charm to help placate the family of squirrels that protectively swarmed around their injured kin. At first, they seemed quite defensive towards him, but he took his time. He got low to the ground and managed to gain their trust. This was a massive feat. If he could get them to trust him enough, he could get close and help the injured creature. It took about 30 minutes, but sure enough, the squirrels recognized that Simon was not a threat, and so they yielded their injured kin to him. Without hesitation, Simon leaped forward and went to the little squirrel's aid. Much to the astonishment of his colleagues, he was able to navigate such a chaotic situation in the most peaceful way possible. The little squirrel was taken back to the rehab center for medical care and was then released back into the yard they had taken him from. The family of squirrels that was once so worried about their friend was now rejoicing to have him back, and the volunteers from the wildlife center rejoiced with them. This was pretty much how almost every recovery or rescue Simon facilitated ended and how he expected his future operations to go down. But one day he was called out again and things went exactly the opposite of what he was used to. It was a normal enough day in mid-spring. This was usually a very busy season for the wildlife aid center thanks to the births of all the new offspring. The team were used to numerous calls around this time of the year. Thanks to the urbanization of the area, it wasn't uncommon to be called to help some young animal that had found themselves in a precarious situation. Simon was out on a call helping a doe that had found herself trapped in a plastic canister. He had managed to help it out and was on his way back to the center when he got the call. It sounded like a young duck or goose had managed to get itself stuck in a boundary fence. This was quite an urgent situation. The risk mostly involved the amount of damage that could occur. If the trap was tight enough, it would damage the animal's limbs. This was the last thing any rescue worker would ever want. Thanks to the heavy rain and busy roads, it took quite some time for Simon and his partner to get across town. But soon enough, they got to the reported location. He jumped out of the car and felt his stomach drop. Before him, he saw a very long boundary fence running along the canal. The call that had come in just said that the animal was trapped in a fence by the canal. No one had actually specified how much fencing there was. In an effort not to waste any time, he and his partner split up and began scanning the boundary fence in opposite directions. They needed to find this baby bird quickly if they were going to be able to help it in any way. Luckily for Simon, he was the one to stumble upon it. He had been looking for only five minutes when some movement in the close distance caught his eye. He hurried quickly to the site and found a baby swan caught awkwardly in the fencing. The poor thing had managed to twist itself tighter and tighter whilst trying to escape. But this was quite a common thing that happened and something Simon had been extensively trained for. Simon knew he needed to stop the little signet from moving too much to prevent any further damage. First, he called his partner and asked him to get the necessary tools out of the van. 
Then he knelt down with his back to the canal and tried to hold the little bird in the fence as gently but firmly as possible. From what he could tell, the little signet had bruised its wing quite badly, but nothing seemed to be too damaged. Unfortunately, the car had been parked quite far away from where he was, so he had to wait patiently, consoling the little bird with soft-spoken words while they waited. You've got to go back the way you came or you're going to get well stuck, aren't you? At first, Simon had been all alone with the baby swan, but while the minutes passed, he started feeling watched. He dismissed the thought, guessing it might just be some curious passerby. But he was very wrong and just about to find out how much. It all happened much faster than anyone could have anticipated. All Simon heard was his partner shout at him that there was something behind him. Simon whipped around as fast as he could and was confronted by the little swan's father. He then did something completely unexpected that caught Simon off guard. Before Simon could turn on his charm and try to reassure the swan that he was in fact trying to help his young, the bird attacked. The massive swan launched itself aggressively at Simon. The poor man was on his knees, so he was at a disadvantage. The swan nipped at his face while flapping its wings aggressively at the same time. For Simon, that was a flurry of aggression he was unused to. Simon threw his hands in front of his face, trying to protect himself. He heard his partner come running to his aid, but the bird was too strong. Its protective instinct had obviously kicked in, allowing for a massive surge of strength. Simon and his partner didn't want to cause any harm to the big bird. They worked together to try and get the swan away from them so they could focus on the little signet. But the task proved to be harder than expected. Eventually, they were able to calm the swan a little and keep him at arm's length. This allowed Simon to get to work. He quickly cut the little swan from the constraints of the fence. The little being was so tired at this point, it hardly fought him. When he managed to check it out, he found that thankfully it was unharmed. He quickly released it to its father and made sure to give them a healthy distance of space. The father swan ran to its child's aid and immediately shielded it from the people with its wide wings. He seemed to check his baby out and then looked up at Simon. Whether this was a warning look or a way of thanking him, Simon was unsure. Go on. Go on. All he knew was that in the future he would have much greater respect for the relationship between swans. He hoped that he would never again have to be attacked as he had. After all, he was just trying to help. Perhaps he just needed to practice his charm a bit more with swans. What a thrilling story. How would you have reacted to being attacked by a swan? What would you have done? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.